Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Real Life Health Show. I'm so excited about my new guest here. His name's Johnny. Johnny, welcome to the show. How you doing, man? Oh, man, it's a pleasure. Like I said, I've been following you for years on YouTube, man. You're an OG and a legend, so grateful to be on here. Well, Johnny, I've been doing this a long time, and I, I like to get other people's stories because I know it inspires others when they see somebody successfully eating healthy and made a transition in their life. And I heard your story. You used to be overweight. You made a transition. And I want you to just share a little bit about how where you're at now and how you got there. So where are you with your, are you a long-term raw foodist, vegan? How long have you been doing this? Okay. So actually March marked 10 year mark for me, March 21st. I'll never forget the day I watched Earthlings 10 years ago, went vegan overnight. It was like that, you know, and it was hard because growing up in an Italian household, I was like, I'll never give up dairy. I started out vegetarian. And uh, yeah, so it hit the 10 year mark this year. Um, I was a raw foodist for five and a half years. I tragically lost my mom to a car accident in 2020 and uh, literally didn't eat for about a day and a half. And my girlfriend was at my, um, my mom and dad's house. We flew back to Chicago and she started cooking for the family and she has a vegan Mexican restaurant in uh, San Diego. So she was making food for everybody and it was like the comfort of just being there and just feeling so broken and like not caring about anything. I started eating cooked food and I started introducing cooked food again during that time. And it was a slippery slope though, because I stopped doing everything. You know, I stayed vegan of course during that time, but stopped moving. I wasn't juicing as much and uh, was going out to vegan restaurants. Like I had friends in California that were like, consoling me and saying, Hey, meet me here, meet me at Pura Vida, meet me at Planta, Crossroads, all these places and started getting strung out on cooked food. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it kind of took me, uh, down a, down a path, but that was like, kind of like my coping mechanism. So. Well, that's very interesting. You say that we'll get more into that because that's one of the things people got to be aware of the emotional eating and the aspects of that, because you could have easily of. Uh, went back to eating a, a standard American diet on situations like that. People often do, but your knowledge was enough at that point where you knew, hey, I'm going to slip this much, but not that much. But not everyone's there. So I want to discuss that because uh, it's the emotional side of this and the mental side, because it's easy to eat raw food, but emotionally it's and socially it's not. So before we get into that, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Chicago, Chicago, Illinois. I was born and raised. I moved out here August 26th will be six years. I moved to California. I'm in Southern California, Culver City. Um, yeah, just for the lifestyle, for the farmer's markets, for the uh, weather, the beaches, you know, the hiking trails. So I think you're in one of the two best spots in the United States. I mean, I know people eating raw food in Minnesota, but I think the two best spots in the United States to do it is Southern California and Southern Florida, I think. Uh, but you're in a great spot. Now, you came from Chicago. So when you turned vegan and saw Earthlands, that was in Chicago? That was in Chicago, yes. Okay. So uh, I spent a lot of time in Chicago. They had a lot of raw food restaurants and a lot of vegetarian restaurants. Uh, Karen Calabrese was from Chicago. She had a place called Karen's Corner, and you you said you knew her, right? Knew Karen really well. Um, she had three restaurants at the time. I uh, I had just gotten into going raw. It was like, like about a month or two after I had gone vegan, I immediately jumped into it because juicing's what started the whole journey. You know, I got into juicing, and then that's what took me to vegetarian vegan. And when I went raw, I did a raw challenge at the time, and I was searching on Google, raw food, raw food, Chicago, and Karen Calabrese popped up. So I ironically seen she was speaking at a veggie pride parade. Went there, took a video of her. I shared it on my page and she reached out to me and said, hey, I love the video you took. Um, would love to talk and meet you. So I was like, oh my God, you know, and I'm thinking like Karen's like, you know, I had her on a pedestal at this time because, you know, Throughout that journey, you know, fast forward, I mean, being a raw foodist before that, I was like, it was like a six month journey. It was very lonely. It was very isolating. And I was looking for these people like I was watching Dan McDonald. I was watching you. I was watching Bully Raw Christina. There wasn't many people doing it, you know, that were posting about it all the time. So Karen was one of them. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to meet this woman. So I went to her restaurant. It was the one on uh, 
Halstead. It was her raw restaurant. It was like the longest standing raw food restaurant. And um, at the time she was like, um, would love for you to help me with some content. I'm not really hip to that stuff. In, in exchange, I will trade you, you know, some raw food. Now her place had a lot of raw gourmet food. And when I got into it, I was mostly on liquids. I was like liquids, cutting a watermelon and eating it, mangoes, you know, a little salad here and there. But I wasn't eating much. It was a lot of liquids. And uh, yeah, then I, then I met Karen. And I mean, we were very close. We actually did a retreat together in 2019 uh, with Victoris Kolvinskis in Costa Rica. Oh, wow. Now, I and, remember that was, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, Victoris and, and Karen are great friends. And uh, and just, that must have been a wild retreat. It must be so cool. You know, just like in hindsight, it's just so much respect for those two. I mean, Victoris is, I mean, I get goosebumps talking about it. You know, some of these people in the raw food world and you see on social media today, they pop up out of nowhere, then they're gone. These people have been doing it for so long, you know, so it's like they are true OGs. And Victoris was one of the kindest humans I ever met. And I was so grateful to be part of that retreat. It was amazing. Wow. Uh, there's a, a place I used to go to in Chicago all the time called Cousins IV. Have you ever heard of that or been there? No. The Cousins no. Incredible Vitality, one of the most amazing raw food restaurants. And wow. Mamet ran it, and it was amazing. So I used to go there all the time and speak. And I remember there was another place in Chicago that had a, like a raw food thing in a train station. like in oh, the, in, yeah, Chicago was, Raw. Yeah, that Chicago was pretty raw. cool. And then yeah. more recently I was there. I was there more recently maybe about... See, all that was about maybe 10, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But then like five years ago, I think I went out there and there were two or three raw food restaurants that I hadn't known before. They were really good. I don't remember the names, but they were they were really good. And uh, so Chicago's rocking. Chicago got some raw food stuff. But you're in, you're in California. I'm telling you, that's absolutely amazing place uh, if you want to get into raw foods and stuff so so you go to california you're you're into this raw foods vegan stuff you go to california and you you said you already did a retreat with victorious and karen so did you kind of were you are you a coach what what are you doing anything with the raw foods or you're just eating healthy what are you doing with it health coaching i do a lot of you know stuff on instagram with you know juicer companies and you know a lot of advertising with supplements and um i continue to do retreats i did one in california i haven't done one in about a year but i did one in ontario california um and just doing things that are aligned with the lifestyle you know and you know it was hard because when i lost my mom i if if you go to my instagram page one thing about me throughout the years is you're never going to just see me selling something or pushing something that i'm not either taking myself or doing so when i lost my mom I was uh, not doing much work. I wasn't doing much creating. I didn't even want a health coach. I wasn't health coaching because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, I wasn't going to fake being, you know, I'm okay, everything is good. You know, I took it really hard. It took me a good year and a half to finally have peace and move forward. Even though we had an amazing relationship, it was very difficult to navigate through that. You know, you we hear all this, you know, it's uh, we're having a physical experience, we're spiritual beings, but it's still, you know, like it was, it was very difficult. And I, I honestly could say if I didn't have the journey I've had over the last 10 years, maybe I would have coped a different way, you know, because I used to drink and go partying and do all that stuff in my 20s. But uh, besides leaning on the cooked food, you know, I really took the time to really grieve and move through it. My mom was one of the closest people to me. Um, I helped her. Well, she did it herself, but, you know, she reversed heart disease going vegan and juicing she seven medications in like less than six months she was just on a blood thinner um and she was going to move out here she was like a month away from retiring so it was tough you know it was a very tough time and uh i put on a face like i was good but and you know behind closed doors i was struggling so wow you said it was a should she have a sickness or was it an accident what did you say happened it was a car accident a car, car accident. accident wow Wow. Yeah, I just get I just get a call. I just talked to her too. You know, everything was fine. And then I get a call. She somebody was on the highway. They they were going over hundred miles an hour, all drugged up. They jumped the median on the highway, hit them head on, opposite side, and caused like a seven car accident. She was the only one to pass. So wow. It, it it was really interesting because it's like she overcame heart disease, she lost all this weight, she's about to retire, and then that happened, you know. And so 
you you have in your head like the way you think things are going to go and then your world gets rocked so but you know it's it's there's been a lot of blessings that, that have come out of it i mean i've gotten really close to my sister and you know i've been able to help i had a really close friend who lost her father a year later that same age as my mom 64 and uh you know just going through that the way i did i mean i didn't want to talk to nobody unless you know people would reach out but unless somebody actually experienced that type of trauma i would i didn't really want to you know talk to anybody like that so i feel like i it's helped me be able to um be somebody people could lean on as well and another dynamic i could bring to my coaching sure so so growing up uh you said you were just into the i don't know the teenage lifestyle drinking just living partying lifestyle not McDonald's. thinking much about anything yeah mcdonald's wendy's i mean i didn't drink in high school when i when i went to college i started drinking you know i didn't have no direction i didn't know what i wanted to do i played basketball my life so you know like um after school's done and you realize i'm not going to be a professional basketball player i went to a junior college i actually became an emt and was going to be a firefighter and then fell into a job at fedex um, my uncle was a driver there for like 30 years. He got me in and he's like, hey, why don't you come in? So I started out as a handler for six months, became a driver. And I was there for like 12 years. And that's oh, wow. kind of what I did. I worked for 12 years at FedEx, uh, picking up packages. Couldn't wait for the weekend to go out and party and spend my money. You know, and that that was my life. And were you ever think, were you ever sick or anything? Uh, oh, yeah, I had IBS, I'm lactose intolerant. I had migraines all I had migraines so bad and I had a migraine medication, but I would actually take Excedrin migraine because of the caffeine and everything. It would make me like, like that. I would, it wouldn't kick it, you know? So I'd be at FedEx. I'd have to call my manager and what we would do is called a sweep where I'd say, I'm, I have a headache. I needed to put like a towel over my head. I was, I would throw up. I would get nauseous. It was that bad. And what she would do is have another empty truck come and they do a sweep and they take all my freight and take it to the airport. That's how bad it would get. You know, in high school, I had a hall pass my whole because I got I had uh, IBS. I had a colonoscopy my freshman year in high school or eighth grade going into freshman year. So oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had a lot of gut issues. I mean, I wasn't the worst eater, but I was eating a lot of, you know, whatever my mom was cooking and I would eat McDonald's. I mean, I guess it wasn't the best, but it got worse when I got out of high school, you know. What made you go look at Earthlings? Was it your health or was it somebody just tell you to watch it? What made you well, watch the, it? The first film was Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. You know, I would, you know, in Chicago, they're known for deep dish pizza. I'll never forget. I was with my ex-girlfriend at the time. And, you know, and we actually went vegan together and we're still friends. And she's still vegan as well. She had set her 10-year mark. But we sat there and we would look at documentaries like Food, Inc. And uh, all these different ones that never really did it. and we came across fat sick and nearly dead and we were eating a deep dish pizza watching it. And I'm like, I'm going to get a juicer tomorrow. I, I never knew I was like 31 at the time. I never knew what a juicer was, you know, like I thought juicing was blending in a, in like a ninja or something. <laughs> so the stories I heard, the people with the gut issues, the migraines, I'm like, this is it, you know? And I was just at a point, you know, I have a before and after, I have a few before and after pictures, but one of them in particular was Christmas. And right before I had um, seen that and I go, I'm just tired of feeling this way. I'm tired of just having I, I didn't have purpose when you're not living with purpose. You kind of get de depressed and you just get stagnant. And that's kind of how I was feeling. I was just ready for a change. And I made a commitment to myself saying, you know, I'm going to do this. And when I saw that documentary, got the same juicer from the film the next day at Bed Bath & Beyond. Which and juicer started. was it? It was the Breville. Okay. It was actually the Breville Elite. I got it. I got it great up. It was like three ninety nine, but it was all like stainless steel. And well, here so. we are, many years later. Uh, I've seen some of your pictures. You have the Green Star juicer. Uh, what's your favorite juicer now? So I was. I've been. I was working with Tribest for a while, and uh, the Green Star was the very first juicer that I like put all my money. I'm like, yes, this is this is it. I can't wait. I'm going to do the wheat wheatgrass. And I saw Lou Corona doing it and Dan McDonald using it. So I'm like, this is it. And over the last couple of years, I've seen another juicer pop up on the scene. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, I'm a little jealous. This thing looks nice. I got to shove everything in this little green star. So actually on my counter right now, believe it or not, I haven't even tried it yet. I just got it. But I have the Nama 2 here. 
Bro, I'm telling you. I'm the I have a video. I'm the biggest Green Star fan juicer out there. I've been using it for years. Me and John Kohler made a video comparing because he came with the Nama. And I was like, nah, nobody's touching my Green Star. I had the expensive model of it. And I'm big into the Green Star all these years. And then uh John told me about the Nama J2. And we came, he came to my house and we did a video comparing the two. And I was like, I'm sold. <laughs> and uh I'm a big advocate of the Nama. It just changed everything. And because for what happened was I was juicing a lot. And then I got married. And my wife's like, this is not easy to juice. And I'm like, of course it's easy to juice and clean. I'm like, it's easy. And then <laughs> she was complaining. So I got so I saw how easy the Nama was online. And I ended up getting one. She juices all the time. No problem. It's easy. It's quick. And so I highly recommend uh, the Nama. And I... If anyone's watching, you want a Nama, I'll put a code below, Paul10, and you can get uh, a discount. But that thing, open it up, man. It's amazing. It changed juicing for me after it's, juicing all those years. It's sitting right here. I, I opened it up. Yeah. The box is over there. Yeah. So I was just in New York, so I, I just gotten back. I had a week of travels and uh, just got back, and I'm I'm ready to start using it. I'm it's going to change the game with everything. It is amazing. It really is. I'm that excited. much of a, I'm a big juicer, and it makes that much of a difference. So... What happened to me was pretty amazing because when I got sick when I was younger, as you probably know, I started with the uh, raw foods. I got better. Uh, well, I started, you know, I was doing the raw foods. I was better. I was going around teaching. I wrote some books. And then I had a big transformation in my life because when I got uh, healed, I started to go on a spiritual path because prior to me being healed, I was pretty much an atheist. Prior to me when I was sick, when I was younger. So I got healed. So now I'm like going all over the place. But then somebody said, I got the greatest health book you ever written. And I said, well, uh, did I talk about raw food? And they said, absolutely. And they said, well, I said, are the people in there that great testimonials from it? They said, absolutely. Uh, to make a long story short, somebody handed me a Bible. And at that time, I had never read the Bible. And uh, the only thing I quoted from it was Genesis 129, that the food for man was fruits and vegetables. Uh, and But then I read it and I looked at it. And uh, it just opened up my eyes to a whole new life. And I've accepted Jesus in my life as my Messiah and my Savior. So tell us about what happened to your mom, the emotional impact of it. How was your spiritual life before that? And then how was it after? Because it always takes something, life transformation to kind of change us. I went from a atheist to a believing in everything to believing in Jesus. So What's your spiritual path with this? Did anything change or did everything change? Everything changed, man. <laughs> you know, um, goosebumps talking about this as well. Um, so, you know, I grew up Catholic and during a time where my sister, she's a couple of years older than me, I would say this is before my journey started. She had married, got married, went Christian and um, was turning my parents onto it. And they would go to Christian churches and they tried getting me to go and, I went a couple of times, but, you know, I didn't, I wasn't trying to hear any of it. And then during this whole journey, like you said, you're on this spiritual path, right? You start eating raw foods and, you know, you're feeling, eating foods, living foods connected to the earth. You start feeling more connected. You know, I mean, when I was at FedEx, I would naturally, cause I was raw, just start taking off my shoes and grounding on my break and eating fruit and like geese would come by me and just, uh, it's an awakening, you know, and you're just like, wow, life is beautiful. Nature's beautiful. And you're just on this journey of, you know, kind of like, you know, it all. And this is, this is your own path, but, um, kind of like the new age stuff, you know? And, um, when my mom passed, you know, she always wanted me to, you know, convert to Christianity and stuff. And my girlfriend is like, Hey, why don't we, cause I was really messed up, man. It was, it was really rough. And she goes, why don't you come to this church um, he, there's a great pastor there and I'm like, all right, fine. It's in San Diego. It's a church called Skyline. And I'm like, fine, I'll go. So I went and it was just crazy because the minute I woke, walked in there, I had this feeling where I thought I was going to like blow up. Like I thought I was like going to just explode, like crying. And, um, I felt like I was, so we were all sitting in the thing and there was two empty chairs and I felt like a presence, but it was like a, it's hard to explain. It was like a hugging, like 
presence of like gratitude. I was holding back tears so much to try to like, you know, let it go. So the pastor comes up there. He was a fill-in pastor, right? And he talks about getting through trials and tribulations. And that was the sermon. And he talks about how he was from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm from Bloomingdale, Illinois. And he says that his trials were 20 years ago, that his parents were driving and it was a winter storm and they got hit by a truck and his mother passed, his dad survived. That was exactly my story. And it was my stepdad, but still, but, and I lost it. I just lost. I'm like, all right, there's no coincidences. You know, this is crazy. And, um, just something about that service. He prayed over me and I continued to go. And every time I felt like it was speaking to me, the pastor, everything that they were saying was speaking to me and I just got hooked. And, uh, yeah, I got baptized two years ago Hallelujah. Uh, I, I, on Easter. So, uh, especially man with everything going on in the world right now, I mean, with all the evil, you can't tell me, you know, it's, uh, it's been a blessing though. It's, I feel like it's really fulfilled and kind of filled that gap that I lost. Um, and it's just kept me be grounded as a man and what I, what my beliefs and my whole moral foundation. So it's been a, it's been a ride for sure. You know, it's crazy because my sister actually went the other way. She was, she was like, I can't believe this. And, but now she's come back and she, you know, she, she's going back to church and, you know, she has her Bible study and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's been an interesting ride because that that kind of like rocked our family, you know, but it's kept me. I mean, some people are like, how are you so good now? You know, because I've come out of it and I'm like, I feel really good. The last like year, I feel like I've been very strong just in, you know, being strong in my faith, being strong with how I'm living my life and just the direction and my intention. So, but yeah, that, that, that was a huge part of my healing process. So I, I I understand completely, and uh, I, I I pray that everyone watching this, because I know a lot of people that are interested in veganism and raw food, their spiritual walk, it's, it's just everything's on their shoulders. It's all about them and how they're going to deal with things, how they do everything, and it's all about them. And I, I'm telling you, everyone out there, I'm not here to, uh, to just change this subject, but I'm telling you, you have a helper. You don't have to. It doesn't have to all be on your shoulders, and it makes it so much easier. So please consider what he's saying. It's so amazing, and uh, Jesus is real, and it's amazing. Uh, yeah, brother. So, uh, wow. So, uh, what's going on now? What do you do now? And where are you at with your diet now? Are you like still eating a lot of foods from restaurants, or are you like really strict and just juicing? Where are you at now with it? Yeah. So I'll tell you this. So I, you know, you were like, well, at least you knew how to come back. You know, right. You were saying that earlier because, you know, the 10 years of experience, but Paul, oh, I was struggling for a while. I was going to all these, ve I was like, you know what? I've been raw this time. I've lived in LA. LA is the Mecca for vegan restaurants. I'm going to tap into all these. And, uh, <laughs> I probably put on like 15 pounds at the time. And cause I wasn't moving and I was grieving and I was just like, all right, let's go. Pura Vita is an Italian vegan restaurant. Unbelievable, you know, but <clears throat> these restaurants are cooking with oils and all this stuff. So I started seeing, I'm like, I got to get back like to myself, you know? And when, like, when I started getting through the grieving process was when I picked myself up. I'm like, all right, this is it. I, I was going for a while every Tuesday, the first Tuesday of every month at a restaurant in Fountain Valley called Allah. Yeah, and absolutely. My, fa my favorite raw restaurant when I'm out there. Amazing, right? Yeah. That and Wild Living Foods. Wild Living Foods is my favorite, actually, downtown. It's pretty awesome with their okay. kelp noodles and stuff. But, um, but yeah, um, I was going there, and Lou Corona would speak the first Tuesday of every month. And uh, I would go the first Tuesday, first Tuesday. Me and Lou would talk on the phone for, like, hours. And then one day I'm at this thing. You know, I'm, like, six months consecutively going and I'm sitting there in front and he's doing his thing and he just looked at me he goes Johnny he goes can I ask why you're here he goes you've been coming I go it's like going to church man I go you inspire me like I'm gonna leave here and I would go live from my phone you know because again being in this lifestyle for the last 10 years in this world I see what what's you know what's happened and the people who have been doing it for so long like that are consistent and have been consistent and there's been so many people that have teeter-tottered gone from vegan to carnivore to this to that 
and you know they they start trying to start like a business out of it and it's like I, i've just seen so much that i think it's so important to continue to pay homage to the people that started the movement that have that have continued to be an example like yourself like lou lou's amazing karen you know um guys like victorious and just people like that and um i just think it's important to keep that going because there's uh there's so many people that are just they're not given the right information you know just being in this for a while and seeing what works and what doesn't and then why they leave the lifestyle so but getting back to that so i went to lou corona's thing and i started a protocol that actually dan mcdonald put together from Lou's Puridime supplements. I was taking 42 supplements a day. I was taking his cleanse, his enzymes, his herbal blood, his um, Pure Life probiotic. And actually, I'm gonna tell this quick story real quick because this is crazy. Um, 30 days into this 90 day protocol, basically you're taking 42 of his supplements a day, eight in the morning, eight, and then, or no, 16 and then eight, something like that. But it's, but you're breaking them up throughout the day. And, um, the morning you would take these cleanse pills and you take them with the 32 ounce juice, green juice. I'm on a hike on day like 31 with my friends in Eagle Rock in, uh, it's right near Malibu. It's in, um, it's between like Santa Monica and Malibu, but it's a hike, it's a two mile hike up and I'm going and all of a sudden my heart, I thought I was having a heart attack. I started getting sweating and my heart started pounding. I go, guys, I was with two of my friends. I go, I gotta sit for a second. And now I'm thinking to myself, I've just been doing juices and mostly raw and these supplements. What the hell is going on? So I sit on a rock and all of a sudden I feel like this something going through me. It was so crazy. And I told them, I got to I got to go take a walk. And I actually had to use the bathroom on the hike. And I if you saw what came out of me, it was crazy because, you know, being a 10 years vegan and stuff. And then only eating all that cooked food and oils. There was, it was a pile of black gunk. Immediately after that, I felt incredible. I'm like, let's go. And I hiked the rest of the trail and hiked down. They couldn't believe it came from me. They thought it came from an animal. But this, wow. these supplements helped me move out a lot of stuff. So, you know, and I don't make money off these supplements, but they're, they're pretty potent and they're pretty good. But that's kind of what brought me back to life. I started that protocol and I've gotten into mostly, I'm like mostly raw and I'll have like, Sometimes I have cooked at night. Sometimes I don't. Um, but, you know, my friend Teresa Jordan out here always said, Johnny, when you start tapping into the cooked food, it's very addicting. It's very addicting. It's going to be very hard because when you go raw initially and then you start eating the cooked food, it's very hard to go back. But I'm still striving to do so. I've just been very active over the last year. I've been into like boxing and hit training. And I do feel like after that, like I'm like starving for you know, and sometimes I'll have like mushrooms and quinoa bowls and stuff like that. So, but for the most part, I'm on liquids most of the day. It's like juices, smoothies. I do take supplements and, uh, yeah, that's kind of like what it's looking like right now. Do you do any fasting? I mean, I do, fa I try to, besides the juice, I don't eat until like maybe, maybe three o'clock. And then I try to stop by like eight, eight at night. So I do have like the little intermittent fasting window. As far as fasting, like juice cleanses, I've done many. I try to do one in the beginning of the year, one like in the summer, I normally do like a watermelon fast and then I'll do one towards the end of the year. Uh, you know, sometimes I've done the spring and fall equinox fast, but um, the longest I did, I did a 40 day juice cleanse. I've done 21 day, 30 day. I, I love doing a juice cleanse, just a simple, 10 day, I just feel like it helps reset the taste buds. And if you're trying to kick something, you could do that and then kind of start eating a little bit better when you come off of it. Sure. And how about your sleep? How much sleep do you uh, like to get every night? I make sure I get eight hours every night. You know, I think uh, to me, I think sleep is very important. I see how I operate when I don't get enough sleep. My creativity isn't on point. My workouts aren't on point. Um, you know, so to me, I think sleep is very, it's like our cell phones, right? Our cell phones are dead. We, we make sure we plug it in to get a hundred percent. That's what I feel like with sleep. I'm for sure getting my eight hours. That's wonderful. That's good, man. That's important. Uh, so uh, have you met a lot of people? I know you said you mentioned a lot of people doing it long term, but have you heard of a lot of success stories uh, of people that uh, made the transition and, and 
like to uh, a vegan or raw diet and they have they like you said you mentioned your mom but what about have you met a lot of other people that overcome diseases that doctors have given up on a, a number of people you know you hear about these stories but i know a number of people in my life that have done it um you know and i i've worked the mastering diabetes retreats and i've seen a lot of those clients with uh i'm sure you know uh robbie and uh cyrus that have the mastering diabetes but the people that would heal from from those retreats but also um i have a really close friend from chicago who had a juice bar in lockport she had a raw restaurant in lockport actually and uh she had a juice bar right next door to it and i just happened to walk into her juice bar this is in the beginning of my journey i would say it's probably in 2014 2015 and i i walked in and i see all these coffee enema buckets and i'm like who owns this place? You know, because I was just getting into this and, and I was learning about this. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like whoever owns this stuff, this isn't they're not, you know, just doing a fad here. They're, they know what they're doing. So and there was all these herbs and stuff. And all of a sudden you go to the back and there's, there's this lady juicing. And we started talking and she opened up her raw restaurant and her juice bar because she had reverse stage four cancer. She had stage four cancer. The doctor gave her six months to live. Her name's Lori Arnold. She lives in Colorado Springs now, but um, she worked with Nintendo. She was very high up and very stressful job. And she ended up going to the Gerson Institute, didn't do no alternative, didn't do no chemo, no radiation. Um, went to the Gerson Institute and ended up reversing stage four. The funny thing is, though, it came back because she went back to her reckless lifestyle, all the stress, the diet. It came back. She went back to the Gerson Institute, became a Gerson practitioner, reversed it again. And she's like 10 years cancer free. She has a huge ranch and she has a retreat center in Colorado Springs. So, mm -hmm. you know, her and we stay in touch a lot. And, um, you know, she's incredible. Um, you know, so, I mean, diabetes, cancer, heart disease. I mean, those are three of the top four killers in America. Right. And, and these are people in my life that I've seen reverse it. I mean, my girlfriend helped her sister reversed type two diabetes. She lived in with her for like a month. I mean, when you really um, get into that, I mean, there's so much knowledge out there now that, you know, before it was crazy. You could, you could say like, Oh, people are um, suppressing the information, but I mean, there is information out there and it's, it's the will to want to do it. You know, I have family that's, you know, coming from an Italian family, overweight, sick. Um, they all have juicers, but they all want that one pill. You know, so it's like there's always. I, I just think that people are either going to have the will to really want to make the lifestyle change because it's not just like doing a juice cleanse and then being cured, right? It's a lifestyle change. It's every you change everything. You change what you're watching. You change where you're going. You change what you're listening to. You know, so and that's kind of how my whole journey happened. Wow, that's amazing. That's so great, man. So what would your advice be or, or to anyone who's watching right now that maybe they stumbled on this video that think they can't do it or they're too far gone? What would you tell them? Oh, man. I mean, my mom was 58 years old and she reversed heart disease in like six, seven months, you know? Um, I, I would just say that just believe in, believe in the process, believe in the power of raw foods and healing foods and juicing juicing to me is like the most powerful tool in modern technology you know it's like we have all these different tools i mean that i'm surprised they haven't banned the juicer you know right. <laughs> fast on it start drinking green juices start throwing some wheatgrass i mean it's to me it is the best medicine you can get i, I even remember on fat sick and early dead they, that guy the big guy that was losing all the weight and going back for his blood work and he brought juice to the doctor's office, you know, imagine that it's crazy. It's like, unfortunately, this is the thing. We know that the medical industry isn't, you know, Western medicine isn't, they're going to treat you with a pill. They're going to treat your symptom with a pill. They're never going to get to the root cause of what's going on. And unfortunately that's how they're trained. Same with the cancer stuff, you know, the cut burn poison approach. So why not try this? You know, it's, it's unfortunate because I've seen it with my family. I saw my grandma, I saw it with my aunt right now. They, you get that diagnosis and it's like a death sentence. It's like fear immediately like strikes your body and you feel like your body's giving up on you. And you don't believe in something like this to, you know, flood your body and, you know, regenerate and all that stuff and detox. So 
Uh, I mean, it's, it's hard because some people are going to grasp it and that's their journey. And I think some people won't, but I just say, believe in it. You got to believe in it. I mean, me as myself, like I'll never turn my back on juicing. It will always be a staple in my diet because I just know the power of how much it transformed my life from what I was doing before. Sure. Well, with all that information that is available, it can get quite confusing because there's so much information out there. But I'm glad there are people out there like you to help people kind of figure out what's best for them in your coaching and your retreats. And I appreciate your time. And I'm going to put your contact information below the video so people can contact you if they're looking for any of your services, especially if you're looking for some fellowship in the California area and learn about where these raw places are. I know you're the man because you're out there and you know these places. So that uh, is a great connection to have. And uh, what's some uh, future projects that you'd like to accomplish or that you're working on now? Well, right now I'm working on um, figuring out retreats. I want, that's my, that's like my passion, man. I mean, bringing people together and seeing in those like four or five days, the breath work, the juicing, the raw foods, the movement, the, the talking to people, you know, cause most people that are on this journey, it's very isolating. It's very alone. You can see people through a screen, but being there, physically with them i feel like retreats just in myself being at retreats it's life-changing you know and uh that's like my ultimate goal is i would love to have a retreat center um but until then i mean i just have all these little spots that i do them at and uh that's that's kind of like my passion i put coaching off to the side for a little bit just okay. to kind of really get myself back over the last couple of years and uh you know just get back to content and get back to just what created this whole journey of mine so well great man i appreciate you taking the time to be on the show here today and oh. uh, thanks for sharing that powerful story dude as soon as you reached out to me i'm like are you kidding me you're a legend <laughs> of course it's my pleasure man well, i would love to come out and meet you sometime i would love uh, you're to welcome to check out the the farm and all, all the trees and that'd be wonderful to have you out here and uh when I make my way out west again, because I used to go out there a lot, but now I'm so happy where I am. I don't want to travel. But when I do, I definitely will look you up out there and check it yeah. out. You know, I know yeah. there's a place down there in Southern California. I used to go to uh, Nero Lock where I used to get fresh durians and fresh jackfruits. Uh, there's a little like international market area around there. And I used to get all those. And I'd be like, wow, because I had to travel all over the Southeast Asia to get these fruits fresh. And then I found this place in California that had it fresh. But so I was in New York, it was only frozen. But now, I mean, I don't have to buy fresh jackfruit. I grow fresh jackfruit. It's absolutely oh. amazing. I mean, it's it's so wild that, you know, the full circle that we can have. I wish I can grow durians here, but you can't grow durians in the continental U.S. But everything else you could just about, you have. And uh I look out my window and it's mangoes and bananas. So if I can get away and travel and get to LA, I'll definitely call you. <laughs> yeah. And if you do, I have a hookup out here. I have a place that has tropical fruit. I just went to pick some up yesterday. I got a bunch of dragon fruit over there, sour sop. The guy hooks me up. So very nice. Very nice. All right, everybody. I'll, ch I'll put uh, Johnny's information below here. I check out his stuff and subscribe to his social media. And I'm going to come back with some more inspiring stories to help you just stay in this movement and just uh, continue to improve your own health. So thank you, Johnny, for being on the show. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Put your comments and questions below. Until then, have a great day and a great raw life. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life, brighten up your life.